Interstellar travel is the bedrock of science fiction. Without it, you just have humans on Earth being really boring. I mean, maybe you've got some on the moon or Mars, but there's no cool aliens with crinkly foreheads there. So look, humans are boring, and that's why fiction is filled with zombies, vampires, and all sorts of aliens. The problem is that the universe is absolutely f***ing massive, and traveling to even the nearest star using current technology would just take tens of thousands of years, which is tens of thousands of seasons of TV, which will all be dead if we wait for. It'd just be really boring. Look, with a single interstellar journey taking multiple times longer than all of recorded history, the ship could experience dozens of world wars, and by the time they arrived at the destination, they would likely have lost any record of what their original mission actually was. Even if we could build a ship that could sustain life for long enough to make that trek, the fact that it would take humanity a thousand generations to actually arrive is, well, it's just functionally the same as it being impossible. And enter the picture, but da -da, the warp drive, an engine slash plot device that allows us to travel faster than the speed of light. But look, the question today, is this just a plot device so interstellar and intergalactic travel could take place? And, or, well, is there any actual science behind it? How Einstein ruined everything like a dick. Though science fiction stories involving people or alien races living within our solar system existed before Einstein, tall tales of visitors from far off galaxies didn't really come until afterwards. But by then, Einstein's theory of general relativity had already shown that traveling faster than the speed of light was rather disappointingly totally impossible. The issue arises from the fact that as an object's speed increases, so does its mass sort of. This is generally how it's explained on the basis that it's shorter and easier to understand, but the idea that moving quickly would create mass from nothing does fly in the face of the law of the conservation of mass. What's actually happening is that the inertial mass is increasing. Now, inertial mass is a specific mass parameter that describes how resistant mass is to acceleration. An object isn't really actually gaining any mass, but it feels as though it is because it requires more and more energy to actually accelerate as its speed increases. As something approaches the speed of light, its inertial mass approaches infinity. Because something cannot have infinite mass nor infinite energy, it's thus impossible for any object with any mass to travel at or exceed the speed of light. So, if it's impossible for anything to reach the speed of light, well, big brain question might be, how can light do it then? How can light travel at the speed of light? Well, you see, light is made up of something called photons, which are particles that have no mass. Look, unless you're able to construct a spaceship with no mass, which you can't, and if you can fill it with people who also have no mass, which don't exist, well, then faster than light travel should be impossible. At least in a conventional sense. But even Einstein theorized a way to cheat the system, though, and that was in the form of wormholes. Now that you've probably seen that same tired explanation a thousand times in every science fiction movie or TV show just about ever, you take a piece of paper, you fold it, and then BOOM! That's some high budget production right there. Basically what you're doing is you're demonstrating how a wormhole would work, sort of. By bending space and time, traversing such a wormhole would allow you to travel from one point to another that is potentially millions of light years away in a very short amount of time without ever having to actually travel faster than the speed of light. Brilliant! But the big question is, why is any of that actually true in any way? I mean, just because you can demonstrate it with a crappy piece of paper and a pen doesn't mean it's science, sorry. Look, Einstein theorized the existence of wormholes, as did many physicists after him, but we've never observed one. Furthermore, most scientists agree that if they do exist, they would be fleeting and unstable, making traveling through one uh, extremely difficult, to put it mildly. So, if general relativity doesn't allow us to travel faster than light using conventional means, well, what about something less conventional? The Alcubierre Drive. The most popular idea for cheating the speed of light is the warp drive, made famous 
by Star Trek. While the idea does predate Star Trek, the show was what gave it the famous warp drive name. The general principle is that rather than travel faster than the speed of light, all a ship would need to do is warp spacetime around itself. It's kind of like a DIY wormhole to go from point A to point B. And of course, there would almost certainly be no consequences of manipulating millions of light years of space time in this fashion, right? Well, we'll get to that in just a bit. For decades, the idea of a warp drive was believed to be purely fictional. It sounded like a neat pitch for a science fiction gadget something like hey what if we explain faster light travel by making the ships fold the universe in half so they can fly where they need to go instantly amazing will you buy it and look that description does sound absolutely ludicrous but with the right amount of techno babble it can be made to sound plausible with the right amount of math, it might actually be plausible. In 1994, while working on his PhD at Cardiff University in Wales, Mexican theoretical physicist Miguel Alcubierre proposed a method that would make a warp drive at least theoretically possible. Named the Alcubierre drive in his honor, the engine would cause space in front of the ship to contract while having the space behind the ship expand. This would essentially create a wave in space-time that the ship could ride on top top of in what Miguel referred to as a warp bubble. Look, the ship would not need to move while inside the bubble. It would simply make space move around it to propel it forward. It would be an inertial reference frame. And if someone inside the bubble were to turn on a flashlight, the light would still be moving far faster than the ship. It was a simple idea, relatively speaking, and the math did seem to check out. And so not only would this Alcubier drive not violate the rules of general relativity, but it also gained the interest of a bunch of other scientists. Now, of course, the idea obviously has its detractors. Mathematics has a tendency to get ahead of physics. Someone can show that numbers can theoretically work, but, well, that is light years away, excuse the pun, from a theoretical model, let alone a practical demonstration. We are really, really far away from a practical demonstration of that. Look, even if warping spacetime in this fashion is possible, that doesn't necessarily mean that it would be at all survivable. One of the many issues with traveling at the speed of light or close to it is that all the empty space in the universe, well, it's not actually empty. It's extremely unlikely, virtually impossible, in fact, that a ship would collide with anything of noteworthy mass, but there still are about 10 atoms per cubic meter of intergalactic space. If you start traveling at speeds of 300,000 kilometers a second or faster, well, those atoms are going to add up really, really fast, which is going to lead to a lethal dose of radiation in, wait for it, under one second. Either the ship or the warp bubble would need to be designed to account for this, and it's unclear whether all those atoms would pass through the bubble, which would then require some sort of shielding for the ship, or if those atoms would stack up up on the outside of the bubble until everything came to a rest. If the latter is true, well, it's going to create an additional problem where once the warp drive disengages, the atoms collected by the shield could fire out from the warp bubble like a planet-destroying shotgun blast. Well, maybe not. It's all theoretical, so we just have absolutely no idea. And look, there are additional fears surrounding the Alchemy air drive as well. Maybe once the engine came to a rest, it would create a black hole. We have no idea. Or maybe contracting space-time would destroy any large masses that actually occupied that space. We have no idea. It's all wildly theoretical. And then, of course, even though the math does seem to check out under general relativity by expanding space-time behind the spaceship, it could allow for backwards time travel. Travel. Well, it's a big no-no in physics, let's just say that. So, obviously, adjustments are going to need to be made to the theory that would prevent this, as backwards time travel is just not possible. But again, this all is theoretical. A lot of scientists have gotten on board with the idea of some incarnation of the Alcubierre drive, so, well, big question. Why is no one testing this out yet? It's been almost 30 years since the idea was proposed. Come on, scientists, get your shit together. Where's my warp drive? Well, look, the answer is that it hasn't taken place because it's totally impossible. Miguel was able to make the maths work, but his warp drive involved utilizing either negative mass or negative energy to function. And while that's a major roadblock for testing his mathematics, because, well, under classical physics, neither of those things actually exist at all. Quantum physics to the rescue. So, look, general relativity, classical physics, never took into account quantum physics. So, it's really nice that we can rely on quantum physics to make science less complicated and much easier to understand. <laughs> quantum physics is easy, right? While neither negative matter nor negative energy exist in classical physics, quantum physics has experimentally verified phenomena such as the Casimir effect that have actually 
demonstrated negative energy. Negative mass remains entirely theoretical, though the Casimir effect is also responsible for the closest thing that we've seen to negative mass. While there are lots of strange things in quantum mechanics, negative mass might actually be just a step too far. Positive mass would attract all other mass, and negative mass would repel all other mass. This means that if you had a positive and negative mass of equal size, the positive mass would pull the negative mass towards it, while the negative mass would push the positive mass away. This would result in both particles flying off with increasing acceleration in the direction of the positive mass. Look, it's a great solution if you're trying to produce an infinite amount of energy to fuel a warp drive, but this interaction seems a bit too ludicrous even for quantum physicists and well, they deal with ludicrousy a lot. So fortunately, Alcubierre's drive only required one or the other, not both, in order to satisfy the calculations. And even more fortunately, thanks to quantum physics, we may not need either, actually. In 2021, two papers modifying Alcubierre's warp drive were published within a month of each other. These papers were done independent of one another, so it's just a pretty happy coincidence that they came out at the same time, like Isaac Newton and Gottfried Leibniz independently discovering calculus at the same time. Something historians and educators have absolutely given them equal credit for. In both of the 2021 papers, they were able to modify Alcubierre's ideas to no longer need negative energy. However, one of them still created a warp drive that would allow a ship to travel faster than light, whereas the other would only allow it to travel at just ridiculous speeds. But like Alcubierre's work, this is still all just theoretical, mathematical models ahead of the physics. It's believed that they should work, but there are still many, 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 many steps between a theoretical model and a physical proof of concept. White Jide Warp Field Interferometer Luckily, a few attempts at physical proof of concept actually started nearly a decade ago. I mean, what did you think, NASA scientists were just going to sleep on Alcubierre's work and watch their government funding dry up so that private enterprises like SpaceX could steal all the glory? No! It is not the extensive testing that we've hoped for, but at least it's a little something. Of course, you can't just build a full-size engine and test it out on Earth. If some of the haters are correct, then the warping of space-time could destroy the entire planet, which would be a bit of a bummer. Look, until we have this technology up and running so we can go colonize other worlds and steal them from aliens, oh, we're gonna need this planet just a little bit longer, so let's not destroy it in an experiment, okay? Instead, NASA's Dr. Richard Jude and Harold White were going to test this on the microscopic scale using the White Jude Warp Field Interferometer. In 2013, and they did just that, and the results were. Well, they were inconclusive. They didn't flat out say it didn't work, but they don't seem to have found it very promising as the experiment has not been repeated in the nearly decade since then. But Harold White wasn't going to give up there. He may not have been able to make the Alcabi air drive work, at least not without utilizing theoretical and probably non-existent exotic matter, but there were other tests to be done. In 2015, White conducted a test of an EM drive in a hard vacuum. An EM drive is designed to reflect microwaves back at itself in in order to generate thrust out of nothing. In short, it's a device that is literally designed to violate the laws of physics. This time, against all odds, they reported a successful test. Their EM drive had violated the laws of physics. Uh, now, unfortunately, in 2016, their work was published, and it was determined that all of their results were false positives, which were able to be replicated and then corrected for returning the expected negative results, because laws of physics. Is it ultimately possible? From the mathematical models that have been constructed and our understanding of physics combined with a much less complete understanding of quantum physics, it seems that warp drives at the very least should be possible. Scientists have put forth their best efforts and thus far they have concluded that constructing a warp drive similar to what Alcabier proposed shouldn't violate the laws of physics nor should it actually require negative energy to function. Whether or not we as a species will ever have warp drives is much harder to answer. The math supports the idea and scientists around the world are actively pursuing the technology. But thus far, the only practical experiments have yielded either false positives or inconclusive results. So this technology could remain well beyond our understanding for, well, at least a hundred years. Sorry you'll be dead. Even if the math is all correct and a functioning warp drive can be developed, there's still the practical issue of safety. Remember how it'd be like, yeah, radiation 
death in, in a second. There's also that issue of maybe it'll create a black hole, maybe it'll create a shotgun blast of millions of particles which could totally destroy nearby planets. Look, we're so far away from any sort of practical warp drive that it's not really even sensible to think about these questions. They are future humanity's problems. Look, in the end, maybe it's for the best that we don't develop a warp drive anyway. Sure, it would be neat to travel to Alpha Centauri at faster than the speed of light, but, well, you better plan for a one-way trip. Thanks to time dilation, while the trip may only take three or four years from your perspective, by the time you arrive there, everyone you've ever known on Earth will already be dead. <laughs> Brilliant. Thanks, time dilation.